We're, uh, so we're pleased to uh, have here Harold's family. First of all, we want to acknowledge Ruth, who is uh, Harold's widow. And we have here his three, uh, I think all three sons and daughter are here. Is that right? Yes. Great. Right. That's wonderful. They, why, why don't you indicate who you are so people can come up and speak with you later? Daughter. There's the daughter, yes. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, oldest, son. oldest son, Gary Shapiro. I'm the youngest son, Mark Shapiro. And Warren. And, and I've, I've inherited his volume, as you can tell. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the best looking one. I'm Warren. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and, uh, <laughs> yeah, so I, I knew about Warren because Harold used to tell me stories about Warren. War, oh. Warren was, Warren took a while to settle down and Harold used to discuss about, told me about it. And something about the Maharishi or something I remember vaguely also. So, uh, so, uh, so, uh, the family has kindly delegated Mark to, uh, say a few words uh, on their behalf, and uh, I think we'll conclude the program with that family representative uh, speaking to us. But before I forget, um, there's a pad over on the table where the beverages are, and for those of you who are interested, um, there's video that we took of Professor Sarnak's presentation, as well as all of the speeches that people have made uh, this evening here. So if you just leave me your, leave us your email address, we'll be sure that you're um, connected once we get that. Um, as Professor Capel pointed out, I'm Mark Shapiro, Harold's youngest of four children. And uh, I've been asked to make some remarks on behalf of my family, as you know, all of whom are here tonight, including my mother, uh, mom, to whom my father was married for over 65 years. Um, for those of you who knew my father, you knew that he had a very dry, if not eccentric, sense of humor. You'll therefore appreciate that from the time I was a child, he had a special way of introducing me to people, which I didn't fully comprehend until I was well into my teens. He referred to me as his last brief moment of enthusiasm. <laughs> Imagine my horror when I finally understood what he meant. First, uh, a, a very special and heartfelt thanks to Professor Capel for coordinating this event. It was an enormous task, I know, and you have my family's gratitude for your efforts. I. I promise to keep this brief, so I'll spare you my father's full biography. This is how I so sneak it in. Uh, which consists of more than 70 years as a mathematician, including 53 years of active teaching at NYU and another 10 years as professor emeritus, and then supervision over 41 PhD candidates, some of whom are with us tonight, many of whom. Um, my own mathematics career is much shorter than my father's. And I'm happy to share that with you. Uh, I was a student at NYU in the late 70s, and I had to take one class as a requirement for my major. It was called uh, uh, cal uh, calculus and algebra and calculus with applications to business and economics. And it was the class that supposedly anyone could take and anyone could pass. I was two classes in, completely clueless, and of course my father is this mathematician at NYU. I came to the eighth floor at Courant, and I sat down with him, and after a minute and a half, he started screaming at me, and he said, this is calculus. An idiot can understand calculus. <laughs> that was the end of my mathematics career. Uh, in, in, uh, just to touch upon something that uh, Gerson Sparrow said a moment ago, and 1986, Gerson and my father, who worked together uh, uh, for many, many years, approached um, American Express to do some work with them. And I was already, I'm, I'm a, a lawyer by, by training and, and by practice. And uh, I was, of course, voted the lawyer to represent them and approach American Express. He went to interview with them, which I knew was a terrible mistake. <laughs> and he sat down, and they were 
very arrogant and very high-handed, and the first thing they said is, what is the largest transaction you've ever worked on? And very nonchalantly, he said, in numbers? Yes, in numbers. He said, a trillion dollars. And, he, and they said, that's preposterous. There's no such thing. No one's ever worked on a transaction of a trillion dollars. And he very matter-of-factly described the flooding of the oil fields in Kirkuk and made absolutely no sense to the people who were there, but they figured anyone who was willing to take a position like that <laughs> probably was serious, so he and Gerson got that contact, that contract. Um, years, some years earlier as a child, and I, I, I wasn't going to mention this, but I, I got some, some good feedback in the elevator on the way up uh, on, on this story. Um, we were on line at a grocery store um, well, let, let me first start by saying as, as much of an elitist as my father was, and for those of you who, who knew him, you know that uh, he, was, he was very particular um, about those with whom he spoke and those whom he considered his, his intellectual equals. Um, and yet at the same time, he assumed that everyone shared this, this very deep knowledge and appreciation of mathematics, which of course none of us did. And we were at the grocery store one day and he was, uh, we were checking out, we were on the express line. Simple enough, right? You shouldn't have any problem here. And I was about eight, nine years old and uh, the woman ahead of us had three six packs of soda. And it was a ten item or less line. So she starts arguing with the checkout girl and says, no, 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 it's really three. And the checkout girl says, no, there's 18 cans of soda here. And my father, I see that something very bad is going to happen. <laughs> my father steps back and he puts his finger on his chin and he looks at the checkout girl and he says, no, no, she's quite right. It's non-Archimedean. <laughs> Now, I'm delighted to tell you all this story tonight because this could be the only audience that would ever really understand what that means, but this was the experience I had as a child over and over and over again. Because we're all here as guests of NYU and the Courant Institute, it's only fitting that I emphasize his deep commitment to the university and to the institute. Uh, if you saw the ad in today's Washington Square News, you, knew, you know that my grandfather, his father, my sister, my two brothers, I, and my son are all graduates of New York University. Although we each pursued a different career path, the education and the pedigree served us very well. Beyond the university, my father's life had three primary foci. My mother first, his students second, and in a distant third place, his children. <laughs> we never really resented our tertiary status because our mother was our mother, and his students were members of the extended family. We came to know each of his PhD students during their time with our father, some better than others, as they often visited the house, came to dinner, and shared family celebrations. One of his students, who you heard speak earlier, Gerson Sparer, who received his PhD under my father's supervision in 1961, became my father's lifelong collaborator and friend. Our families were very close, and we enjoyed many years together doing and celebrating things as a group. My father was demanding, he was tough, but he loved us all. This was life in the extended family. Beyond that immediate circle, my father invested in his relationships with other mathematicians which he cherished, such as, for example, Wilhelm Magnus. I recall as a child visiting Professor Magnus at his home in upstate New York where he taught me about rock collecting. Who would have thought that Wilhelm Magnus would have made his greatest impression upon an eight-year-old who was interested in rocks? <coughs> also among his friends, as someone mentioned earlier, were Paul Erdish, who would visit our house from time to time, camp out for a week, sometimes leave money, sometimes take money. It was this friendship which led to my father's collaboration with Professor Erdish on a paper which gave my father 
something he valued very much, an Erdish number of one, one of only 511. There may be 512. There seems to be some dispute about this. Um, I, I know that the mathematicians in the room are familiar with the concept of an Erdish number. Many of you may also be familiar with the concept of a Bacon number, signifying the holder's collaborative distance from a movie in which actor Kevin Bacon appeared. And more recently, the hybrid of the Erdős bacon number. I have been working for the past 18 months to get video of my father incorporated into a Kevin Bacon movie so that he will also have the lowest possible Erdős bacon number of two. In keeping with my commitment to be brief, I'd like to close with one final observation about and by my father. It will surprise many of you to learn that throughout his life, my father had a fascination with art, poetry, and painting. In his later years, he said that he wanted his epitaph to publish his favorite poem, which he penned. After he passed away, my mother decided that she didn't want him to rest for eternity beneath those words. This evening, however, I finally have an appropriate audience for that poem, a group of people who will appreciate what he wanted to be his final message to the world. And it goes like this. I love food and I love sex, but I get my kicks from Pi of X. <laughs> Thank you.